All right, let me get let everybody get back in and hopefully it's right. If it's not, I don't really know what to do about it. Hopefully. Okay, is that better? Also close the door because it was open. So maybe that was the problem. But anyways, these are the FX effect brushes that I got. Um, Jean said that you have to soak them really good. Yeah, they are like got lots of stuff on them. They're not um, expensive brushes. Like I said, it was 10 for 40. So I can't say that, yeah, these are like, oh, the best brushes ever. But for that kind of stuff, I don't mind. And I'll probably use some for acrylic. And I'll probably put some up for watercolor. Um, yeah, I got my brushes too. I got them the other day. I just hadn't gotten them out or done anything with them. But you're right, Jean. They, they have a lot of what feels like the stuff on them. So I don't plan on using them tonight. Probably we'll play with them Saturday. I'll get them all soaked and cleaned. Is that better? Well, welcome everybody. Um, everybody's starting to pop in. So Vicki, are you working on a class that you're getting organized? Hi, Miss Eileen, Linda, Jean, Kat, Lori. Okay, so I'll go over my watercolor palette in a minute. I'll get to the good stuff. Let me just close that so I don't lay anything in it. And I thought I'd do a rooster. I didn't want to do anything like I had a snow scene to do, but I just don't feel like thinking about it. But I picked out some papers for Saturday. We looked at a book on alcohol inks with Kathy Berg the other day. And one of the things it was talking about was doing alcohol ink on top of like a dried gel medium. So I thought I would take some magical papers and some jelly poles. And we would put a coat of gel medium over them. And then uh, let them dry. And then Saturday we'll play and see if we can add some. So I'm just going to give them a, a good coating. And I just use Mod Podge. They'll get varnish in the end. So I don't really worry about it being tacky or sticky, which I do know it can do. I have a little bit of uh, Magicals moving in a couple places where it probably wasn't dissolved, but it's not going to bother me. This was uh, Magicals on the jelly plate. So we'll, like I said, we'll just let those dry. Um, this was a jelly print, probably on top of Magicals. I think it was a Magical paper that got jelly printed. I was trying to pick ones that the inks could work with. I have more inks coming on Friday and Saturday. I have some pastel ones that I want to try. Uh, before I invest in a Copic, I want a soft pink and a gray. And I didn't have a turquoise, which, you know, that it's not how we roll in this house. You have to have turquoise. So I ordered um, a pack that had a soft blue, a soft salmon color, and a pink. So I thought those would be pretty. I ordered a gray in the... Um, Hey, Alexa, how are you? Yeah, they have to have shimmer. They have to have teal. They have to have shimmer. Uh, however, I got to tell you, uh, I saw some browns at Joyce's house. Let's not use our other name for brown today, right now. 
But uh, I may have to get some of that sepia that she was using. I like that. And I like her copper. I have a copper, but I liked that spray she had. And I liked that blue. The Afternoon Delight Denim. I like, and I have some other blues. All of mine have shimmer. You miss class? Well, we'll be there soon. And we get to do potential and kinetic energy. So we get to do lab again. Like real lab. In fact, Monday, I'm going to climb up and put a big pendulum up in the room. So it'll be ready when y'all come to class Tuesday. Yeah, that's what we're going to try, Kathy, is I'm going to put these aside to put the alcohol inks on top. She said you could do alcohol inks in her book on top of a, a gel medium. Now, I don't think you could do too much of the uh, other, like the blenders and the alcohol bit a whole lot, because I know if I try to do alcohol markers on top of the papers, this is magicals that have been jelly printed. This is magic. A lot of these have magicals on them. But if I try to use like markers, like I do the pit marker, I tried the um, Spectrum Noir, which are an alcohol marker, and they kind of ate into the gel medium. They would like dig a hole and pit it when you apply pressure. So I think if we don't apply a lot of pressure and don't use a lot of um, too many layers, then it'll sit on there and then it'll be just fine. And then I'll do like a spray seal for the varnish. So that's the, I, so tonight I just wanted to coat these so they can dry and cure. course I'll have every available shelf. This was um, a jelly print transfer that didn't turn out very good, but you can still sort of see the girl and I thought we could do something interesting with it. The book title, um, I don't have the book yet. I ordered it. Kathy, what is it? Um, use your imagination with alcohol inks or something like that. I ordered it. I ordered it used because it was out of stock in the new and prime. So I ordered a used copy, which I do occasionally order anyways. And have not, I use, get the ones that say use like new. And I have not had any problems at all doing that. Um, hi, Marianne. Welcome. Let's see, the, let me find the title of the book. Mine will not be here right away because like I said, I ordered it from a used source. So it takes, this is sad. This is my, what's coming in list. I have foil coming tomorrow. Um, I have mats coming tomorrow. And then Friday and Saturday, I have the inks and the Yupo. The book says January 8th to January 24th. And the name of the book is Pigments of Your Imagination, Creating with Alcohol Inks. And Kathy Berg did a flip through the other day on Saturday. And she did a really good flip through so you can see. I think I've seen you, Marianne, in other chats 
at other people's streams, I'm pretty sure. This was also some kind of jelly print, maybe a magazine transfer that didn't turn out is what it looks like. But I thought it was a good background to start with, you know, to take alcohol inks. And I probably wouldn't use it necessarily for collage. So we'll set that aside and we have one more. Which is good because I'm running out of room where to put them. And this is using up this old Mod Podge and I can open my new one that I got. This was made using like the mask, the tape method. And I didn't use uh, tape tape. I used plastic divider to make a mask. Okay. Yeah, it was on Kathy Berg's stream that we saw the book. Hey, Berg. Kathy Berg. All right, so that's all of those. Those are all drying. Those of you watching on YouTube, you just fast on forward. Okay, so I just added a rooster to watercolor paper because I just wanted something simple to work on tonight. I have a snow scene to do, a barn, but I didn't want to focus on that. All right, so the idea for the palette came from Sandy Allnock, and let me put her name. She's a She's on um, Instagram and uh, YouTube. Sandy Allnock, she has a YouTube channel. She's on Instagram. I think she uh, is a designer or works, does some stuff with some of the stamps. She does a lot in Copic. She does some color book stuff. She also does watercolor. So I decided I really liked the new palette that she was going to change out her 2017-18 palette and change out some of the colors. Now, I did not do exactly what she did. She had a palette that held 24. So I did a 33 palette is what I bought. It's like Janet's, except for instead of 24, there's no mixing trays right here in Janet's tray. There's mixing trays. Um, it's one of the ones that seals. It has a pan that sits up here, which I took out. I'll use it. And I made my swatch card, and it's covered with tape. Except for, I messed up right there. Um, except for two places, I messed up here. I have three tubes that are still coming that I don't have in and aren't swatched. But, and I decided to do it kind of the CC style instead of just like starting the yellows here and working my way across. Um, so I have for my blues, I have Cerulean Cobalt Blue, Ultramarine Deep. Those are all Holbein's. Then I have the Anthroquin Blue, that's an M gram. Marine Blue, which is a Holbein. I will have Cobalt Teal because Jean said it was a really good uh, teal. That's coming in M gram. I couldn't decide 
on this. So what I did was put, and this is something I won't use very often. So I just put both right there because I thought I could grab either one until I decided which one I would use. This is Terra Verde and the one down below is Shadow. No. Yeah. This is Terra Verde and the one down below is Shadow. I started out thinking about the Shadow. Then I went towards the Terra Verde. Um, so, like I said, it's one I wouldn't really use a whole lot. I don't care if they do end up mixing up a little bit. I was just looking for a darker green. And those are both Holbein's. Hooker's Green, Olive Green, those are both Holbein's. Sap Green, which is M. Graham. I got a Serpentine Genuine from Daniel Smith. And it was weird, in my opinion, how it kind of granulated out with this brown bit. I got leaf green, which is Holbein. Azo yellow, which is M. Graham. New Gamboge, which is Holbein. And then the okras, I have the M. Graham and the Holbein. I like the Holbein color better than the M. Graham. They are different pigment numbers. Uh, I have them sitting next to each other. Again, if they mix, I don't really care. The M gram is a little less yellow. Doesn't lean as much to the yellow side. Then I have uh, nickel quinacridone gold, M gram, burnt sienna, Holbein, quinacridone rust, for M. Graham. When this is gone, I might not refill this with this burnt sienna because this burnt sienna is very close to this. So in hindsight, I'm not sure I might put a different color in the future in that space. Then I have permanent yellow orange, Aussie red gold, which Daniel Smith, which has not come yet, vermilion, which is Holbein. Um, permanent auxiliary crimson. I said that wrong. That's a whole bind. Now I have a, um, Cambium red deep coming in M gram, but I also have it in whole bind and I wanted to compare them. And then I put the tape right there. So I'm going to have to stick a piece of, I, I wish I had undo. I covered it up. That was a mistake. Then this is a new one that I got. It's what I used on the car the other night is um, I can't think of what the, the P stands for. It's a maroon and it's M gram. I have to look at the two to see what it was. Perlin, Perlin. Maroon perline and it's an M gram. And I love that because it's hard to get a dark red sometimes. Which is why I didn't think I had Cambian red deep. I thought I just had a Cambian red. But I ordered the M gram. I'm hoping the M gram is a more blue. Hi, Shauna. Then I went ahead and kept the shell pink in there. The quinacridone magenta, the quinacridone violet, those are all Holbein. Dioxine purple, which is M. Graham. Daniel Smith moon glow. Um, M. Graham neutral tint. And then just to show you the difference, this is the M. Graham raw umber. And this is the Holbein raw umber which goes towards the yellow side and this goes more blue brown. And again, I put both there and I don't care if they really mix. And then I have Payne's gray from Holbein and I put a black from Holbein. I use black when I'm doing rocks and stuff. So I kept a black in there. I didn't put a white in there, but I did keep a black. Um, but that's kind of what I ended up doing. They're the colors that I tend to do uh, landscapes. They're the colors that I tend to go back to. 
This is a Holbein shell pink. And it's a double pigment. It's PO73 and PW6. So I'm not a big pastel girl. But CC said it, we needed it. So I went ahead and put it in there and thought I would try it. And hi, Lena. So I liked, um, I have a, t a tendency to gravitate towards the warm colors, especially in landscapes. So that was where I was kind of going towards. Hi, Sarah. But that's kind of what I was leaning towards. I figure if nothing else, I can get another one of these, like Jean said, and do a different version if I want it to. Yeah, it's it's a very soft pink. In fact, it took quite a bit to even get on some of the... I will say the thing that I'm not real crazy about the whole vines is they lift. They lift a lot. They're not really staining. If that makes sense. And so it's difficult to glaze with them because they tend to lift when you're working. Well, I'm still going to, when the, when the colors are off of this, this was just too close, which I was afraid it might be when I was setting it up. Um, but when the colors are you, and I'll use this still like for bunnies and stuff. I don't care which, if I get a mix of blues, I don't care. A mix of greens, I'll still use this paint. When I'm doing a bunny or something, that will all be perfect. But when this is clean, my thought was that I could set the palette like this. And I can see this, have it tilted up. And I can mix right here because I do like missing on the, the, yeah, I just like, and to me, a lot of these colors will glow and I kind of like that. So tonight I'm just going to use this to mix in. out in front of me. You can sort of see I have the mixing tray set in the front. Then I have the paints back here and I have the colors, which colors in what pan sitting in front of me. I also still will use this color that's left on here. But I thought we'd just do a rooster. I'm going to give this a light spray just to kind of wet those. Get those going. And I am going to start with a little bit a frisket, just a little, that needs to stay white right here. I think that's the uh, part that's supposed to be white. But it might be, I think that's it. Let me check my phone. I don't know where I have, I have these reference photos. 
Just a second. Bob, I can hear Roger. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of right there. Hey, Tay, are you staying or are you going? You want to get up and say hi to everybody before we start or no? I did order new frisket too. I know that will make um, Shauna so happy. Joycey was hilarious. I don't know. Probably... Uh, Shauna, that's its colors that that rooster is kind of uh, gold and reds on the body and blues on the feathers, blues and greens. Come here. Come here. You want to come up and say hi? You want to say hi? No. We just wanted to get away from what was going on out there. They're saying hi, Tay Tay. All right. I have to open the door because she's going to want out. But yeah, I ordered new uh, frisket. And I can still use this bottle when it's gone, I think. I do like it in the bottle for some applications of it. Because talk about ruining a brush. All right, I'm going to go Azo Yellow. up in here and then we'll go darker Go ahead and lift a little bit of that and lighten it. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'll just use it up. It it worked, you know. Like I said, who would know? It was in the bottle when I bought it. I have to say it hasn't um, plugged up. This is New Gamboge. I might put that kind of heavy right in here and then clean my brush and let it kind of blend out I do want to put some on the yeah I 
but you know, she probably just forgot, you know, she had to do the job. Old lady. Uh, Bob, don't be maligning old ladies. Well, I mean, like, really old, not your people. <clears throat> A little brighter color right here on the tip, too. And then I'm going to go to the nickel SO gold. Put some of that right at the top. Bring that around. Right. I'll just put it on the edges there for a minute. And I'm just going to take a damp brush and kind of let it blend out. I'm going to darken the Some of that back out here and there. Hi, Julie. Hi, Maxie. Hi, Janet. Wasn't uh, Janet? Wasn't some of Joyce's uh, choices today? I would never have picked those choices or those color combinations. But she got some really cool papers. This is the quinacrone rust. I'm just dry brushing some of this areas that I want to keep adding the dark, clean my brush, get it clean but damp, taking most of the water out. So I can just go in and soften those. In fact, I need probably a little bit more water. Thank you. 
Okay. And I'm not going to worry about where it kind of bleeds out of that, my pencil line. Hi, CB. Yeah, she surprises me. And like I said, I'm, I like brown and blue, but I would think, oh, she's going way too brown. And then it would be gorgeous. But, you know, the ones I really like have shimmer. And I really like that a couple of those ones that she had the shimmer with the brown and the blue. And I just want to soften this line I have right there. And I'm going to go to the okra for his feet. And then I'm going to go into the quinacridone. All right, and then I just kind of glazed over that with some of the leftover color on my damp brush. So I'm good with his body, I think. I'll come back to his feet and add some detail to his feet. I'm going to soften where this came out here. All right, let's go. He needs to be red up here. I'm going to do vermilion for the all over red color. Let me turn it upside down real quick. And this entire area will be red. And again, I'm not going to worry if some of this comes out. And I am going to go back in and add the new gamboge. On his beak. Real quick before I forget. Just tap that in. 
Oh, I'm gonna get a little heavier coat of the vermilion here added. And I'm just, I'm not gonna even worry about the eye right now because we're gonna add the details in, in the black with a pen. And I'm not even gonna worry about if this bleeds over a little bit into this bottom fur, cause that's feathers. We're going to add a little of that to the bottom. Hi, Christine. Okay. So let me dry that real quick. And now I'm going to hit parts of it with the Camden Red Deep. And I'm going to turn it upside down again. Okay, and I'm gonna clean my brush, get a damp brush. Soften some of that. I want to keep some of that light in here. I'm just going to pull out some of that red. All right, I'm going to clean my brush and now I'm going to go and get a little bit of that maroon color. Okay, I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush. Get it clean.
trying to add some darker lines with the burgundy and the smaller brush. Okay, and I'm adding a little bit more water so I can get some flow. That's too much water. But. trying to get some lines in there. dry brush a little bit of that. Right, and I'm going to come back to the Cambian Red and add that to a little bit of that I'm going to just kind of add some texture in here which probably won't show up on the screen And I'm just pulling some of this hair out over the yellow. I'm going to come in and try to darken the tips of this too, I think. Thank <laughs> you. 
pink. Get that clean. Let's go to the Kim Graham Burnt Umber. And I'm going to add that to one side. A brush. And just kind of soften that. I'm not sure I like that. It went a little green on there. So I'm going to take the neutral tint. I'm going to add a little neutral tint right up in here. Right under here. back in here. Oh, clean my brush. Actually, I want this brush. that wet and then I'm just gonna kind of come back with a little bit of the other color and mix in it. And I'm gonna want some of that back when I'm gonna add a little gray. I'm going to get a stiffer brush because I want to try to, there, that. I'll try that again with a little Payne's gray.
Okay. Adding the rust back in. And that's going to be all dark blues and greens, so I'm not going to worry about that. Put that quinacridone rust back in there to get that glow. All right. I think that's better. I'm going to put a little bit of that down in the leg, too. Okay, I like that better. Hey, Dot. Okay, so we're going to switch gears here in just a second. We're going to start on the feathers, and the feathers are going to be blues and greens. I'm going to start by putting in, I think, hooker's green. Grab a little of this yellow water here. And then I'm going to put the green in on the tips of some of the feathers, not all.
I'm going to turn it again. Again, this is just kind of a a base. Normally I do the feathers in paper, but tonight I'm not going to. Okay, I think that's a good start. All right, now I'm going to go to the marine blue because I don't have a, a cobalt teal yet. I don't have a teal in here. And I'm going to add a little bit of that yellow into that. Get a wet brush and kind of blend that out. some turquoise in here. Thank you. 
Okay, and I'm going to add more yellow just to get a lighter version of it. Okay. So that's a fairly good base coat. Clean brush. Hi, Norma. Hi, Catherine. I think I said hi to you, Maxie. If not, hello. See if I missed anything. Bye, Jilly, if I didn't already miss you. If you're talking to me, put it in all caps. Thank you, Catherine. Your, red's your favorite color at the moment. Mine are these like golden rusty colors that you can make glow. That I blame on you actually, Lena. That's not necessarily a bad thing. All right, now I think I'm going to go to ultramarine. I'm going to go to blues. And I'm going to add some ultramarine to this green. Okay. I'm going to grab a little Payne's gray and add to it. And I think I want to add a little purple to it. It's not. I'm going to add a little dioxy. There we go. I'm going to end up with a. I want a more bluish purple. Got a lot of water in my brush right now, so I'm just gonna glaze a few of these. I still don't have the color I want. All right, let's take a 
clean brush and see if we can. All right, and I'm going to get in that purple. And I'm trying to just drag some dark purple lines in here. All right, hit that blue again. All right, I'm going to hit that purple. So I'm starting to get this area finished. Green back into that blue. There we go. Also, could use the anthracone blue that will darken it. That'll work. I'm trying to get a darker blue. Thank you. 
Okay, then I'll grab the purple again. And I'm going to get some more of that marine blue going, you know, full strength. All right, almost done. Wispy pieces. Okay, I think we're ready for the pin work. And um, I don't know what we want to do for a background. Move that real quick. Okay, man, just a little bit of all right, pin work here on the edges. I'm trying to keep it kind of whimsical, like I don't care if my line is 
perfect or not. We'll add some of the feather lines back. Just done with that. I'm just kind of doing wispy pen and ink lines. I'm gonna soften that one I don't like, but it'll darken that. I uh, doubt anybody's next, Vicki. All right, so I'm going to take a little white, a highlight, and then some white rings there. I need to take the mask, the frisk it off. And then it needs just 
a touch of a pink almost in that wattle area where the white is. And then I'm going to hit it with just a little bit of a white acrylic or the, actually the white paint pen will work. with dots, which you can't see unless you're looking really close up. I almost forgot to do the feet. All right, and I don't know what, still haven't decided about a background color. And I may not want one at all. Thought about kind of a lavender. Yeah, if I do too much orange and red, then he, that's, I want him to pop. Um, Let's start with giving him a ground. Behind him. Right, and I'm just letting the neutral chant bleed. Kind of like that, and then I'm going to soften it with some clean water. like the brown in there with that purple. Okay. 
Okay, I like the ground. Let's dry that. Okay. I'm going to sign it right here. And now let's All right, I'm going to go with the yellow. And I'm going to go with the real bright yellow to start with and then add a little. Nickel quinacridone. And we'll keep it real bright around the body. Oh, I wish I had two of these brushes now. I'm gonna put water and let that bleed out. Okay, so let's put some of that in here. And I'm going to try to tilt it so it runs away from all that red. All right, then I'm going to get and add water. Thank you. 
I'm going to pounce some of that color out and let it be lighter. Okay, let's go to this side. Okay, I'm gonna take a wet brush and grab that edge before it dries. I want to avoid that land there. Okay, let's count some of that out. Okay, now let's grab some more of that yellow. Thank you, Catherine. All right. I need to move over here a little because I'm getting some blue. I got some kind of a green color, but some of that's from the feathers. Okay, clean the brush. All right, and then I'm gonna, I think I need a clean paper towel. Okay. Now I'm tempted to try something. I'm going to get some of that teal color. It's the marine blue. really soft in some of these areas meeting the yellow and then pounce back All wet. I'm getting a little bit of a line in there that I don't want.
and I'm going to do a little heavier turquoise here. Okay. I need more water. Kind of like um, trying to do like a cloud almost. Like a sky movement. Deliberate water lines is what I'm trying to get to some degree.
All right, I think I'm done. Pile it up. I don't know if I'm going to keep that tray in there. I think I'm going to take it out and leave it out. Clean the last of the brushes up. Make sure they're... Clean. Just take the tape off is all that's left to do. Tape stuck to the board. All right. Yeah, it's late for Lena. She'll, she'll finish the recording. This right here is too white for me. I'm going to grab just a touch of yellow. And knock it down. That's better. It was just too, um, like it was left out. Yeah, I'll be here Saturday. I can stream um, tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Then Sunday, I'm going to mourn that I have to go back to school. So there'll be no stream from me on Sunday. But I can stream sometime tomorrow. in the evening or after Vicky, maybe. Saturday, I'm gonna play with the alcohol ink. I made our list for Kathy and Eileen. You'll need me. Okay, I'll be there. We don't have any plan. My plan is it's right now it is wet and icy. When we came in the house earlier, it was starting to Get a lot of ice on the lines and ice on the trees and it rained all day so it will probably be icy and yucky tomorrow yeah i have to go back to work monday no kids monday the kids come tuesday so tomorrow
Yes, I'll be here Saturday. I'll stream Friday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Three more times before I go back to school. Okay, CB? Was there something else? Yeah, you must be lagging. But here's what I'm going to work on tomorrow. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. I'm oh, just a second. Let me see if it'll, a barn in the winter with trees. So I'll probably stream tomorrow night after Vicki. Uh, then I don't know what I'll do Friday. And then Saturday we'll play with the alcohol inks. But I thought it'd be fun to do uh, like a red barn with the golden rust colors and the blues. And the, this had a lot of shadows for the snow. And I'm going to do uh, from the book, the method with some of the frisket for the ice on the trees and the ice, some of the uh, like ice on the barn. Most of the snow part will be just white. Okay. Well, like tomorrow is Thursday is tomorrow's Thursday. Yeah. So I know Jean's streams tomorrow, right? And Vicky. Does Janet stream on thir Thursday? Jean and Vicky. Okay. Only impromptu. Okay, that's what I what I didn't think I was right. Only when Eileen makes you. She she bosses you around. So, like I said, I'll probably stream tomorrow after Vicky. But I can, yeah, it won't be a long. She's at 7 Eastern. Maybe I won't stream tomorrow at all. Maybe I'll just take the day off. Or maybe before Jean. What time does Jean stream? 1 Eastern? Oh, I won't be streaming before Jean. We'll just play it by... Yeah, I sent her a text today and because I mailed her package to Australia. But I never heard back from her. So I don't know, you know, like not knowing. She never said anything back. I just said that we missed her and hoped everything was okay and gave her the customs number. Because I mailed the two girls today. I mailed um, AJ's watercolors and, G and um, Jen's package. So I am sleeping in, CB. There is no doubt about that one. Oh, and I didn't mind doing it. I had already said when we knew that Maria, Marie couldn't stream or shouldn't stream that I would um, stream the second time. I'm a night owl, I don't care. Just don't ask me to get up and stream at Dee Dee's time. That ain't happening, unless I stay up all night. If I have a really good book, I might read till five or six in the morning, but then I usually want to go back to sleep. I fall asleep. I'll get up, pop into Dee Dee's, and then I go back to sleep. That's why I'm never hardly ever at Dee Dee's going off because it's just too early for me. That's the whole, I like to get up, eat breakfast, and then go back to sleep because I can. Hi, Button. 
Is Barb on Friday, this Friday? Well, and Kathy Arbor might stream. Your DDs before you go to sleep. Yeah, yeah, Jean. I had a little bit of a hard time too sleeping the night before. I don't know why. I mean, it's well, it was a long day, CP. It was. I started at Mary's late about 15 minutes after she was in saw what she was doing was there off and on like it had it on but I wasn't like really paying attention to it and then I fell back asleep then I came into Dee Dee's when she'd already started stayed there for just a little bit then fell back asleep Yeah, but you came to mine second stream and stayed, and then you said uh, you got to go to bed. Which, but that after Dee Dee's, I didn't pay a whole lot of attention in the coloring one, um, Nick and Tina. I was doing stuff. I was listening to it, but. I was up doing stuff, getting breakfast, getting something to eat. Then I closed my eyes and, you know, laid back because I had to make sure that I was completely coherent for Colleen, Lena, and Janet. I did, and I had to be at Shauna's. Yeah, I just, I'm not interested in coloring, in coloring books. Now, I pick up a lot of tips in watching Dee Dee, and stuff. I just don't, you know, I don't care about a flip through of a color book. I'm not going to buy it. And the chat moves so fast at Dee Dee's and there's so many people. Yeah, right. They're... Somebody said she shouldn't have pretty envelopes. They get nicked. At Dee Dee's, you mean, Dot? Somebody said that? My, my envelope from Dee Dee got here just fine. Now, when I've taken art envelopes with decorated outsides, the lady at the UPS store always threatens to keep it. Yeah, I like when Dee Dee does more mixed media or pe colored pencil work. But I mean, she's fabulous with coloring. But my favorite day at Dee Dee's is when Dancy comes and they clean. Yeah, she, yeah. And she shows us techniques that I have used in my work. That's what I love about Dee Dee is she may be on a coloring book. 
but she's showing you a technique that you can use in mixed media or watercolor or portrait work. And she's just so fabulous at everything she does. It's like Kathy Arbor. I will watch Kathy Arbor do anything. And I like to watch um, Vicky paint portraits. I'm not going to paint portraits like that. I mean, I, I can't say never, but it's just not my thing. Yeah. Like Kathy could just say, here's the paper. And I would just listen to her because I just love everything she does. And I do whimsical and collage. I mean, I just do a different thing. I love to watch Eugene watercolor. Like you do glass. I'm not painting glass, but I find it fascinating how quickly you have captured something that to me seems very hard to create glass. People on YouTube, we're just talking, so. You're not interested. This is the end. So I like the fact that our group is diversified. And Lena and Janet cracked me up. So I have to say, Miss Janet, I'd watch you dry your nails and paint your nails too. Because you and Eileen crack me up. You never know what Lena's going to say. She's so funny. And I love her style of painting. I love how Lena's paintings come out. Like, I now want to paint a ballerina. I found a picture of a ballerina. I was like, I have pictures on my phone of ballerinas because I want to paint a ballerina on a grungy um, background now. Just because I want to try to do it. Some things I don't do because I do sell my work at art shows. And some things I find just don't sell for me. Like portraits don't sell because they're like, who's that person? It took me forever to sell Audrey Hepburn. And then it was a steal that she was in a frame. And I sold her for like 50 bucks. But the Rosie the Riveter girl, which I love, has never sold. People look at them like I like the challenge of painting a portrait. But they don't sell for me. This kind of stuff sells all day long. The bunnies, the, um, the landscapes will Yeah, I love that. Yeah, yeah, the the kiss painting. When she took my palette with the two extra watercolors, when she took the vineyard palette, this blew me away when she took those colors in this palette plus a gold and that mink color and created that portrait, the girl with the butterflies on her faces. I was stunned how awesome it was. Like, because I know how these swatch out and I never would have thought to do a portrait from them. You know, I was thinking 
a vineyard, like a landscape. But when she took and used that mink color and these pinks and that yellow and did a portrait with the, I was like, whoa. I would have never looked at those colors and thought to do that. And CB, you have awesome drawings. You need to tweet and Instagram more often what you do. The dragonfly was really pretty, Shauna. And how you uh, use... Yeah, CB should be streaming. Um, Eileen should be streaming. She would probably be syndicated and have a national offer if she would just. CB, no, Eileen, yes. At least what we should do is we should figure out Hangouts and get Eileen on the Hangout. We don't even have to see a big screen of Eileen. We could just hear Eileen and Jen or Eileen and Janet because that would be hilarious. Hi, Gail. Yeah, we just watercolored. This is, my, I'll show you, Gail. This is my new palette, which I'm really excited about the colors because they glow. That's all the colors I picked for the new palette. And I picked a lot in this that because I was looking for that warm glow. Hi, Jillian. Um, you yeah, if you if the two of you got on a hangout, you could be banned. That is potentially true, Janet. Yeah, I've seen some hangouts. If there's too many people, it's confusing and distracting. I wouldn't mind it with like one to two extra people if they were doing like the same thing. Like if we were doing a project out of the book, Fast and Fun Watercolor, and you could, you know, like go like flip screens and see how the other person was doing it. Or if like Gene and I were watercoloring and we both had the same reference photo, but we did different color choices, potentially, you know? Yeah, I'm not a big fan either. I think it, I wouldn't have more than, I wouldn't have more than three because it's a lot of people talking. You can't see the little screen. But if you had to, you can be the coach. Okay, Eileen, there we go. We can have two of us and Eileen will be the coach. She could boss Jen and I through a, a blind six, blind three, something like that. That would be so hilarious. Don't encourage the bossy messy. <laughs> we just got to roll with it. Yeah, I don't, I think if you're doing like more than three people, then it's more of a private thing. Like you want to hang out and not necessarily for the public. You ordered which book? The Fast and Fun Watercolor book?
Yeah, I think it's fun to do the same project, but it comes and see. I love when Kathy, Janet, Lena, and I all did the same project, and it turned out when we'd also had seen Colleen do it, and they all turned out so different but pretty. Hi, Marion. Thank you. Yeah, they probably would get the fast and fun. You'll, I, you're going to love it, Beth. It is probably hands down the most, the book I've used the most that I've ever bought, that I actually did. I've done five projects out of it, which is a lot for me. This one is the other one. that I've done a lot of projects out of. Of course, I can't find it now because I've put these up and down so many times. I've lost my other book. It was my other favorite book, but it's lost in this room. Poor book. It may never appear. It's the stars, branches, book. I need to clean. Oh, here it is. Here's the fast and fun watercolor. But this is the other one that I really like that I bought. And it's, uh, to me, it's more watercolor and then doodle on top. I bought it so I could be more like CC. And help me doodle. All right, guys. I am probably going to go. Yes, this is a good book. And, you know, our... Shauna does flowers. I just don't do flowers well. I like flowers. Yeah, Z Zandra is who showed this. And I bought it. She also showed that color combination book, but I haven't done it. Colleen is who showed us this book. And then we had a blast doing like three or four projects out of it. With her, this one is by Yelena James. And that's her style of work. So she does watercolor and then she does doodles. But she shows you different, like, leaves, coral. Um, Kind of like star shapes. My tabs are all on her, you know, shell shapes, jellyfish, a fan. But a lot of it is the watercolor, and then you do the the ink and yeah, you do the watercolor as like a background, and then you doodle on top of it. Or I like to do like organic shapes and then doodle on top of it. So to me, it was more about helping me doodle because I have a hard time. You know, Cece will do this like soft watercolor and then she'll go in and add all this doodle on top of it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I love that. But when I go to do it, I just, I'm not free enough to, to actually, I'm not loose enough.
but I like the underwater stuff. And I like using this with metallics on dark uh, colors too, and use some of the interference paints. Yeah, I don't see the, like, and I see it and I think, oh, that's easy enough to do. But then when I put blobs of color on the paper, I'm like, and I start thinking about doodling. It looks like crap. I'll show you. I started one. I saw it just today. And I thought, oh, yeah, that's right. That was awful. And I just, well, I was trying to do flowers. And just doodle after I did some, but I didn't like it. That was it. Yeah, that was the, I think the other one I got rid of. Or I put too, I put more paint. This was one I started, but then I put a lot of paint on it. Because I didn't know what to do. Oh, see, I don't like that. But I figure someday I'll do something over and collage, and some of it will poke out and some of it won't. I like the drips. I like the watercolor. I just don't like the doodle part. But I really like the drips. So. And I decided that I don't like the writing on this. I really like the Texas. So I'm going to tear around the watercolor and take all that away. And then I'm going to print the names of all the cities on the computer and mount it with um, foam tape behind it so that it's above. But I didn't like my writing, so I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna just tear. So it looks like a handmade watercolor paper. And I'll just keep I hated my writing. I just need to get that black piece out. That's the hard one. Here we go. And I'll just get those little bits of black out. And then, like I said, I think I'll print all the names of, like, just do the whole page. 
print it and then stick that, hi Sandra, and stick that down with pop darts, dots. And I think it'll be better. So you can sort of get the idea. Because I even thought about just putting it in an eight by eight frame with the Texas and no names because I hated the writing on it. It didn't come out the way. I liked it in hers. I just didn't plan it. My Texas was too big or my paper was too small. You know, like it was one way or the other. I needed. I see, how are you feeling? There, managed to tear the coast without losing any islands. Not better. Where did I see the? Oh, it was in this book. It was in Texas. It was New York City. It was in this book. If you're bored with watercolor, read this book. And she did the city of New York in the streets. Can find it. A second. There it is. And she wrote sideways, which I didn't write sideways. I just, like I said, I don't like, I don't like my writing. I think she maybe wrote it with the brush, hers. I'm not sure. But she used frisket masking fluid, and then she did the colors. And she did the city, New York City. Yeah, this is a cool book. I'm going to do the next project I do out of here is I'm going to do this one. Not necessarily New York City, but I like the reflections. And some of this is material that's collaged on top, I think, for the detail. Or that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to combine this project with this project. And I did the um, interstate lines. For the state, not counting because uh, there's way too many counting. Yeah, hers is messy looking too. I just didn't, I don't care for my writing. So I, but I liked how this was like shapes of buildings and granulated with the reflection. And then I'm going to take some of these more detailed ones and pop a few detailed ones on top of it. Like I might use the idea of using a bus in front of the buildings. I like the bridge. This one reminds me of like maybe London. So maybe even do like, you know, this is New York. But this one reminds me of 
like Big Ben and she was just talking of it. She's cutting out shapes out of watercolor papers and then composing a composition and then adding those pieces into it. So I'm just going to kind of merge those. Yeah, that would be fun. Like the big eye would be, uh, we could focus on London. I could do a double bucker, double decker bus, a bridge, big band. We could pick out some I iconic things, but it's not necessarily there in the right order. You know, so, but there's very little detail in the background and then you put pop a few of those on pop a few of these that have detail or, or different colors that pop like maybe if i did blues and grays but we popped a red double decker bus kind of thing you could do the united states you could very easily because uh, all you would need to do is outline with the frisket the whole United States and then all the borders for the states. That would be neat. That would be neat. And you wouldn't have to write any words if you didn't want words. Oh, were they? So maybe I won't stream tomorrow, but Friday, maybe we'll do that project instead of the snow. Because I do want to do something else out of this book. If I did the United States, so you think I should just leave this and not put any words, just put it. This, I could just leave it like that, Eileen. I could I could just get this and put it in an eight by eight frame and frame it square and just leave it. Then I'm done. Then I just need to flatten it and mount it. If I do that, I'm going to get an eight by eight frame, I think. That size would be good. Yeah, here's eight by eight. Eight by eight would work just fine. If I got a frame that was eight by eight and I put this in the background and sign it on white. I can try it both ways, CB. I can print the cities when I go to school and put it on white paper and try it both ways. See, there's my original Texas pattern. And I just laid it down and went around the outside with the... That's where this, in a fine line bottle... Yeah, that's what I was thinking about doing it was Wordle or different fonts and sizes. But I'm going to do that at school because I can print it at school in black and white and then lay it down. But I can test it out and see, but I'm not going to worry about it. But that's what I decided to do because I didn't care for the... Did I show you? Did I, I don't think I showed you the pores I did. Let me go get it and I'll show it to you. These are the why I made the Texas stencil to begin with. I did pores 
in red, white, and blue. And then I took my plastic stencil that I cut and laid it down and put black paint. And then I put a little jewel where HSI, and I wrote HSI Fort Worth because they're gifts for my principals and assistant principal. And this one's the same thing. It's just going a different way. Night, Shauna. So that's where I ended up doing the Texas stencil. So I am going to do some of those pours and do that to sell some of those, but not add HSI Fort Worth. But these are our school colors. It's also the state colors, red, white, and blue. This is more of a burgundy, but that's our school colors. So I thought that was kind of, and then that's our school name which I thought was neat. They just weren't dry in time before we went on the holiday break. To do the state work. So I just haven't been in the mood to pour the other. I have one, two, three, four more canvases to pour. I have canvases that are not anything done with them. But I don't know if I like the state of Texas with them. So, all right, guys, I'm going to go get something to eat, watch a little TV, listen to my book. I'll see you all tomorrow at Jean's and Vicky's. All right, night, everybody.